Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Finance Gems Money Smart Week 2021 content. We are doing our third session after an amazing week we've had of so many insightful conversations about personal finance. And our, and our last conversation today, I am joined by an amazing woman doing so many incredible things in the personal finance space. She goes by the name of Nom Tavelem and she is a financial educator creating content on YouTube, particularly on her YouTube channel called Money Conversations with Nomta. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that I think is so important in any country that is trying to build a sustainable economy with great financial systems. And we're going to be talking about breaking down the markets, making the JSC relatable to me and to you, for it not to be a distant um, figment of our imagination, but something that we can see ourselves creating financial wealth from. And I am so pleased to be joined by Nomta. So Nomta, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us, Tanya. Thank you. And I think, you know, to start off our conversation today, I've thought about how investing has been such a daunting and overwhelming task for so many South Africans. And I think mainly because the majority of this country have been excluded from the financial and economic systems for many, many years. So when it's the opportunity for us to invest, it's like, oh my gosh, where do I start? And so from your perspective, do you think we've come, you know, far or at a good place at bringing the markets to townships and rural areas and to people you know who'd want to invest or do we still have a long way to go um i think compared to what it has been in the past we are definitely making progress uh, but i do think that there's a lot of uh, work that still needs to be done in, ter in terms of uh, financial education um mm. but i think most uh, most of the times or you know in the past it used to be many people used to believe that uh, investing is only meant for the the rich people or maybe you have to have like a lot of money yeah. um, like a lump sum or something like that, in order for you to begin investing but now I think more and more people are understanding that you can actually start with however much money you have um, and also the investing platforms that have been put in place right now are more accessible and also more affordable but there's definitely still a whole lot of room for um, financial education you know for people to actually understand what investments are. Yeah, no, definitely. I definitely agree with you. And I think just on that point, I read an incredible article in preparation for this interview written by the Sowetan Live in 2019. And they were doing a survey um, and they found that investors told the wealth management group Schroders that they would make more sustainable investments if their financial advisors actually told them information about the markets in an easy to understand manner. So from your perspective, do you think financial advisors and the financial industry has done a good job at breaking down the markets and investments to their clients? And if not, what questions should clients be asking their financial advisors when they do start to make investments? Um, yeah, that's a good question because I think many people um, have not been investing, not because they don't want to invest or they are not interested in investments, but solely because the, the, the information has not been presented to them in a, in a language that they can understand. Yeah. So I think um, we need to uh, break the jargon more or the financial industry also needs to make sure that they break the jargon more in terms of making people to understand you know, all these, all these financial jargon that it can get a lot for, you know, an ordinary person that has not um, gone through finance books before mm. on a formal educational level, right? Yeah. Um, but I think the questions also that one needs to ask their uh, financial advisor, that's the, that's the second part of the question, right? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you should be able to, uh, first of all, sit down with your advisor and be able to tell them your goals. What are your long term goals? And he should be able to understand from that perspective and be able to draw something up for you or, or your financial planner, you know, they should be able to understand where you want to go. Um, and also you should be able to understand uh, the transaction costs. Okay, this is very important. The fees are very important when you are investing, and, and a lot of money goes towards that fees and costs, the total costs, yeah. um, and as well as the taxes. So you should be able to uh, ask them to for a breakdown of actually, you know, in monetary figures, preferably than in percentage forms, because sometimes when it is a percentage, a 3.5% can easily sound like it's not a lot of money. But if you are look, looking at it at um, in figures, like in real figures, like 35,000 yeah. rand, that's actually a whole lot of money. Right. So you should be able, um, you know, just be able, anything that you don't understand, you should be able to ask them. Yeah. Mm. No, definitely. And yeah, another thing, 
Yes, another important thing is um, the financial advisor that is selling you the product. You should also be able to understand how what is going to be the relationship that you have with him. Is it going to be something that he will be, you know, checking up? I mean, every now and then, maybe three or six months later. Um, yeah. Because also we have to uh, take note that there are also economic and market uh, conditions that change, right? So sometimes mm. the investment may need to be readjusted here and there. So, yeah. Mm, I love all the different points that you've mentioned because um, investing has the intrinsic risks and then the the risks that are that are around us all the time um, in relation to our economy. And I think it links to my next question of looking at the three main markets that exist: the capital markets, the money markets, and derivatives for those who are incredibly you know risk risk prone and um, how does one know which markets they are better suited to invest in what should someone take into account in their lives and how would they know um, that what they're going to be investing in is going to give them a suitable return okay risk appetite um, you have to know what understand yourself what kind of an investor are you are you an aggressive invest aggressive investor neutral or risk averse meaning um, are you more reluctant on taking on risk right so mm. because uh, for instance the money market and also again your goals this is again important because what uh, do you have long-term goals or short-term goals because the money market for instance is more suitable um, for somebody that has short-term goals and also because it's more liquid and um Exactly. So it's more liquid. Uh, but then if you're looking at the stock, for instance, you should you should be able to uh, have like long term goals. Um, let's say something like 10 years or, or even more. Mm. And also it's a very volatile market. So you should be able to be somebody that can, you know, take risk. Um, yeah. So I, th I for to answer your question, to just sum it up, I'd say it's about your risk appetite um, and your goals for the most part. Yes. Mm, no, definitely. And looking at someone who wants to maybe invest in stocks, what's the main indicators that they should look at when choosing a company to actually invest in? Okay, well, you should, again, you should look at what uh, the, co the total cost of, of your investment is going to be. And also it depends if you want to uh, go for individual stocks or you want to go for ETFs, which is your exchange traded funds. Yes. So I personally prefer exchange traded funds because they are, this is like a basket of shares, right? Yeah. That checks a particular index. But if you go for individual shares, then you really have to make sure that you, are, you know your stuff. Um, you know, you have to research a little bit more about the company and also you have to take into account many things, right? Many factors such as the market, market uh, capitalization of the company. How big is it? Maybe how long has it existed? Uh, has just it for existed? those who may not uh, know what market I capitalization is, just break down that definition for us. Okay, it's basically the size of the company, how big the company is. Like, mm. let's say, for instance, an example would be the top 40 JSE. Uh, those are the top uh, biggest companies in South Africa by market cap, you know, like yeah. how big they are, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and you want to make sure that you invest in a well-established company that has existed for a while. So, yeah, that could, you know, make you relax a bit in terms of, you taking on that risk because remember this is like a maybe you're probably in it for the long haul right so yeah. you want a, a company that there um for a while and then another thing is um dividend a dividend income if you are it depends what you are looking for what are you what do you want to get out of this whole investment so if you are somebody that also is looking for dividend income um and also maybe even capital appreciation then those are the things that would interest you as well so you want to know is the company does the company pay dividends um etc so because that money you can also use to reinvest it and allow it to earn compound interest for you mm. Yeah, I think you've broken it down very, very well for someone who needed a crash course <laughs> on investing in the stock markets, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, to conclude our conversation today, I wanted to conclude it in a very fun way. And we're going to play a little game. So if you had 10,000 Rand today to invest between the capital markets, the money markets or the derivative markets, taking into account being able to diversify your portfolio, what would your investment strategy be? Um, wow, I wish I had that money. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But uh, for me personally, I would have to look at my investment investment strategies or consider what my investment strategies are. Yeah. So what I take into account, um, I've already mentioned that I personally prefer um, ETFs. So in this case, I would definitely go for an equity ETF. Um, and particularly one that is available in a TFSA, uh, for somebody that does not know what that is, is a tax-free savings account. Um, and then I would look for one that, because, you know, like I said, with the, with equities, you are actually looking to invest long term. So I would, that's why a, T, a TFSA um, is already something that you would be looking to put your money in, but that would probably stay for 15 years or more, right? So mm -hmm. and then another thing, I would also go for something that has a, a global exposure or, or, or that you are um, the geo focus of it is international, right? So of that ET, of that uh, equity ETF that is tracked, that is being tracked by that um, index. Okay. So yeah, but I think what else? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. And of course, the dividend income. I love dividend income as much as I also love capital appreciation. But I love um, the dividend income because then it helps me be able to get money, uh, maybe quarterly. And then I can I usually take that and then put it back in there and reinvest it and allow compounding interest to make the magic for me. <laughs> yeah. Creating wealth. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the power, I remember Warren Buffett saying that the greatest um, benefit of investing mm -hmm. is just the power of compounding, you know? And if I think, yeah. if I think we can get that in our communities to say, if you invest your money, it will grow on your behalf without you, you know, doing much, just being diligent in your research um, and keeping up to date with yeah. the markets. It really is a route to achieving financial prosperity. Um, and I think increasing our financial literacy levels. So very interesting investment strategy. And from our side, Nomsa, thank you so much for the work that you continue to do. I think it's incredibly important to ensure that there's more organizations like ourselves and content creators like you who educate people about financial literacy because ultimately um, financial literacy is one of the keys to empowerment. So thank you for joining me today and thank you for the work that you do. Thank you so much. It was a lovely interview I had with you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.